lovely Coastline family and welcome to this week's Sunday Experience. My name is Jo and this is Anne and if you're new with us this morning then we really want to wish you a massive welcome to Coastline Vineyard. We really hope that you enjoy the service. We also really hope you've enjoyed the sun this week. The lovely weather that we've been having this summer so far, fingers crossed. We've really enjoyed the beach this week, haven't we? Yeah, we have. We don't have a garden, sadly. sadly. So our only way to catch the rays is to just take a few minutes walk down the beach, which we've been loving. We've yeah. had barbecues with a few friends. Uh, I'm even going paddle boarding later this evening. And Are you? We, yeah, and we've had a couple of swims in the sea. I must have missed my mobile on that one bit. Well, you know what they say, the early bird catches the waves. Right, anyway, <laughs> whatever. Um, and something really exciting we've been doing this week, as you might have known, that July 4th, things are opening back up. And we're super excited because we are in the process of booking our one year anniversary. And what are we doing? We are hoping to go camping, camping. because that's about all we can do with what. Yeah, but we up. love camping. We we love the whole. We're not going to New Wine this year or DTI, sadly. So we thought we would do our own little camping trip, which is really fun. And also this week, or maybe last week, I graduated. Yay! Yay. <laughs> so now I can read for fun. So any book, any book recommendations, do put them my way. I'm very excited to read again. Yeah, Jo's done amazing. And sadly, we celebrated her finishing Moreland's, her degree on Zoom, as with everything else. We've had people's birthdays and baby showers and all sorts of parties on Zoom. And sadly, Jo's graduation was part of that, but she's done an amazing job finishing her degree, as I'm sure lots of students yes, have as well. absolutely. Well done to all those who have graduated. It's not been easy, but it's definitely been worth it. Yeah. So this morning we are in for a real treat. We've got Johnny and the band about to lead us in worship in just a moment. And so wherever you are in your home, whatever comfort wear you're wearing, maybe still your pajamas, then we want to encourage you to, to get up off that couch or out of bed and join us to worship Jesus. And then just after that, we've got Aid bringing our notices and announcements and a bit of an update from this past week and all that you can get involved in, all that we're doing. And then we've got Sarah bringing us the word this week. And then we will Amazing. see you again after all of that. So we're gonna head into worship now and uh, we look forward to worshiping along with Absolutely. you. Absolutely, see you soon. Jesus, we fix our eyes on you. Holy Spirit, we look to you. Would you lead us? Would you lead us into truth? And Jesus, we pray that you would be glorified this morning. Come now. Remind us how good you are, how kind you are. We are so grateful that we get to do life with you and in service to you. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you would touch every heart this morning and that you would have a smile because of our worship to you. In your amazing name we pray. Amen. Oh, Lord. 
In the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come and we gather together to call on your name, to fall on your Savior, to fall on your grace and hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down, as your people sing.
Jesus, thank you for your joyful salvation. Thank you that we've been saved into a living, joyful, exuberant hope. Thank you that we've got reason to celebrate. We praise you for our freedom and we praise you ah, for the joy and the hope that is to come. Thank you, Jesus. You're amazing and we love you. Amen. Well, hello again, everybody, and thanks to Johnny and the band for another beautiful time of worship. If you don't know me, my name is Aid, and it is just great to have you with us. Thank you so much for joining us for our online Sunday experience. We're always trying to think of ways to help you feel connected and a part of this church family. So even though it's the hot, one of the hottest days of the year, I thought that I would wear one of my signature check shirts to remind you of what I might otherwise wear on a typical Sunday at St Albans. It is uh, lovely to have you with us if this is your very first time and if you are watching this for the very first time please do connect with us. We'd love to welcome and embrace you into the family and the best way to do that would be for you to fill out an online connect card. Just click the link in the description below or visit our website but please do connect with us and if you're a regular here if you've watched loads of these Sunday experiences then it's great to have you with us. Please do comment in the in the chat room uh, to the side of this video. Please do review and like and share this video, share all our videos, share it on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, but we'd love to get the word out. So please do share all of our video content. There's a, a couple of bits of family news just to update you on, a couple of uh, really lovely things to celebrate with you this week. Two of the young couples in our family, uh, in our church family, have uh, just in the last week or so welcomed their first children to their family. We've had Matt and Lydia welcome little baby Amelie to their family. And also just uh, uh, this week, a couple of days ago, we've had Hannah Marie and Jane welcome little baby Aria to their family. So huge congratulations to both those couples. And if that's news to you, but you know those, those folk, uh, why don't you send them a message of congratulations that I'm sure they would love to hear from you. And the other bit of wonderful family news to celebrate is a beautiful story of healing. Uh, but instead of me share it, I wanted to introduce you to my friend Karina and let her share her story of what God has recently done in her life. Hi everyone. So since I was little, I've had a bad reaction to wheat, mainly skin flare ups and digestive issues. And um, for seven years, I've been gluten free. The nutritionist put it down to a wheat allergy. There was a lot of fear attached to it that I wouldn't be able to breathe. Um, and my friends can testify that if I did eat wheat, I would be extremely ill. Um, I've had a few prayers over it over the years and all I've wanted to do is eat a chocolate twist. Um, and nine months ago, I felt the Lord's gentle voice invite me um, and he said, you can eat it if you want. Um, and I chose to trust him and I ate a small amount within a cereal bar, which would normally make me react. However, this time it didn't. And so I put it down to um, his gift into not having fear anymore of eating it. Um, since then, I've been really encouraged and challenged by him. And two weeks ago, I went for it and I went and got a whole chocolate twist from M's Bakery, the size of my face, and I ate it. It tasted incredible and I had no reaction at all whatsoever, not even sharp stabbing pains in my stomach, no reaction. And since then I've eaten pizza and bread. It tastes amazing. Um, and I still live with questions um, and the tension of, of the why and, and God's healing within the now and the not yet that he talks about in the Bible. Um, but I can't deny my story and I choose to claim it, that he has healed me and I can eat gluten. Um, so I thank you for listening and I really hope this encourages you as well. 
Bye, family. Oh, wasn't that so amazing, Karina? Thank you for sharing your story. It was so beautiful to be able to celebrate your healing as a community. Now, don't forget, if there's any way that we as a church can serve or bless you right now, if you have practical need, if you need prayer support or pastoral care, if there's anything that we can do to help you right now, please do reach out to us. Just go to our website and click the Get Help link on the COVID support page or email us directly at COVID support at coastlinevineyard.church. Or maybe you've got a friend in need or you want to nominate a neighbour. Maybe they need practical help or a food parcel. Please do get in touch with us. We would love to serve them at this time. Now, maybe some of you have seen the recent Spectator article that was published in the last few days, or you've seen the reaction to that article, that hugely misinformed article that criticised the UK church for seemingly having disappeared during lockdown. Well, the truth is that I couldn't have been, I couldn't be more proud of our church and, and of you all for the ways that you've simply and practically stepped up and demonstrated your faith by loving our town and loving your neighbour, by befriending the lonely and caring for the vulnerable, by the ways that you have donated and helped to distribute food, you've been dropping around medicines to, to, to people who are sick. Many of you have been inviting your friends to Alpha. We've got over 20 people on our first ever online Alpha course. Some of you helped us deliver flyers to the local neighbourhood. We've connected with over 7,000 households offering help to those people who live closest to St Albans. And uh, through all of the life group networks and our pastoral care team, we're caring for people who are, well, many who are dealing with just the lockdown exhaustion and fatigue people who have been recently released, released from prison, people who are struggling with mental health and who are grieving in all sorts of ways, the church is more vibrant and more active than ever before. And do you know what? I want to say a big thank you because we could not have done this without your help and without your generosity. So I want to ask those, if you are, if you're working at the moment, but you've not yet partnered with the Ministry of Coastline in loving the King and, and living the Kingdom, if you're able to give, please, can I invite you to begin the adventure of generosity and to invest with us as we extend the Kingdom. You can give in all sorts of ways, it's super easy. All the details are on the screen right now. You can give by text, you can give online, you can even beat the QR code that's on the screen. That'll take you to our giving page. But please, if you're able, please do join with us in giving to Coastline Vineyard. Thank you. Now we're going to uh, listen to the next instalment of our Genesis series. Sarah is going to continue our Beginnings and Blessings series uh, and I'm looking forward to that. Let me just pray for us as we ready ourselves to hear from Sarah through God's word. Let's pray now. Lord, we thank you that even though our buildings are closed, God, you are still building your church. Jesus, I want to thank you that even though social distancing is in place, you have not distanced yourself from us. You are still drawing close to us as we draw close to you. And Holy Spirit, I want to thank you that even during lockdown, you are still so very much on the move. The kingdom is still advancing. And so this morning, Lord, we ask that you would continue to build up your church through your word minister to us, encourage us, inspire us, I pray, in Jesus' beautiful name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Coastline. Today, we're going to continue our journey with Abraham as we read Genesis 21 and 22, which are some of the best moments of Abraham's life and also some of the worst. But let's start when it's still really good in Genesis 21 with the birth of his son. So 21 verses 1 to 3 says, The Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did to Sarah as he had promised. And Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore him, Isaac. So this is it. This is the long waited for promised child. It's what you and I as the readers have been waiting for since Genesis 12. It's what Abraham and Sarah have been waiting 25 years for. And then in three simple verses, as if it's so easy to the Lord, he shows himself faithful and comes through and delivers on his word. It's awesome. Yes, so good. But of course, in that waiting, 
Abraham and Sarah hadn't always made the wisest choices. Uh, we heard a few weeks ago from John who talked to us about Hagar and Ishmael. And in those waiting years, Abraham had slept with his servant Hagar, who had borne him a son, Ishmael. And so now you have the promised son, Isaac, being raised alongside the illegitimate son, Ishmael. And who would have thunk it's really hard? It's really difficult for everyone. And it's creating a lot of problems and turmoil. And so Sarah and Abraham, and ultimately God, send Hagar and Ishmael out into the wilderness where it looks like they're going to be killed and they're going to die and it's is not looking good. But God, of course, intervenes for them and rescues them and delivers them. And he actually comes and saves them and, and blesses Ishmael to be a great nation. Now, Abraham's story continues in Genesis 21, though, and we see him making a covenant and treaty with a guy called Abimelech. Now, you might recall that, yes, God's promise to Abraham, of course, included offspring as numerous as the stars, which Isaac is the first part of, uh, but it also includes a promised land. It includes a physical dwelling place for Abraham and all of his descendants. And so in Genesis 21, with this treaty and covenant, we see Abraham receive the very first physical piece of that land. So things are looking really good for old Abe right now. He's got the promised child. He's got the promised land. The Lord has taken care of Hagar and Ishmael. And so they're not going to threaten what God has spoken about Isaac and about a Abraham's offspring. So like things are good. And then Genesis 22 happens. So let's pick up in Genesis 22. It says, after these things, so after all the first steps into the promises of God after the first pieces of Abraham walking in his full identity and calling. After those things, God tested Abraham said, and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here am I. He said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Wait, what? <laughs> what just happened? Did God really tell Abraham to go take his beloved son and sacrifice him? Like, what is going on? A little bit of historical context is helpful at this point. Because while it seems completely out of the blue and crazy for us, culturally speaking, child sacrifice was the norm. Every major religion and deity would ask it of, it of its followers and believers. So it's not like completely off the grid for Abraham to hear this. I actually wonder, though, if, if the first time Abraham had this conversation with the Lord, if it was a like, oh, I knew this day would come. Like, uh, I was waiting for this. I, I knew you couldn't be as good as I thought you were. I knew you were just like all the other gods. Maybe. We, we don't know what his, his first heart response to it was. We do know that it took Abraham three days to reach the top of the mountain where he was supposed to sacrifice Isaac. And in reality, it was only supposed to be a half day's walk. So I actually think Abraham elongated the time and stretched it out as long as possible so that God could have every opportunity to stop him and say no. So I don't think that Abraham wanted to do this or that he was keen to do it or excited or anything like that. I think he just really trusted the Lord and he really had faith that God was going to do what he said he was going to do, and that he, he was as good as he said he was. Because he is able to give his yes to this, as we, um, as we read in verse 3. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two, his, uh, took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. 
On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they went both of them together. And Isaac said to his father, Abraham, my father. And he said, here am I, my son. He said, behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went both of them together. So those few verses, that, that bit of scripture that I just read, is kind of the key to understanding this whole story. Because it actually shows us what Abraham, our father of faith, really felt. It shows us that actually true faith, the faith Abraham was showing here, is all about trust. Now, did you catch in verse 5, Abraham actually says to his servants, I and the boy will come back to you. Well, how is that possible? How, If he knows he's about to go up and sacrifice and kill his son, how is it possible that he would think his son would come back down the mountain with him? Hebrews 11 gives us a little bit more insight into this, where it tells us that Abraham actually believed God would raise his son from the dead if he went through with it and killed his son. That's how strong his faith and trust is. But this is the thing the story shows us, that actually faith and trust require an act of faith and trust. We can't just say, oh, I totally trust God. Oh, I have total faith that he's going to do what he says he's going to do. It actually requires our actions to line up with what we say. Because if, if we don't, it's, it's just lip service, right? A few years ago, I went bungee jumping. And it was, you know, something I always wanted to do, always on my bucket list. And I climbed a scaffolding and I, I wasn't scared, really excited, you know. And I'm at the top and I'm chatting with the guys who run it and we're having bands and it's super fun. Like, I'm not afraid at all. And then they tie the thing around my ankles. And it's literally like, like a towel and a hook. It's like nothing. I should maybe explain and tell you that I was in the middle of Uganda and it was like a bunch of Australian expats and I paid them like 30 bucks to do this. Like... So maybe not the highest health and safety rules. I don't know. But there I am with this towel and hook. And I look at it and I'm like, oh man, that is not as strong as I thought. But, you know, it's fine. I trust it. I, I trust it's all going to be okay. These guys have done this before. I trust them. Great. So then what you have to do with your legs bound together like that is you kind of hop waddle onto the edge of this plank and you have to go so far over it that you that you put your toes around the edge of it. So I like, you know, kind of waddle out and I put my toes over the edge and I look out and it's just air. There's nothing around me. And I have this thought of, oh, inappropriate word. And I think, what have I gotten myself into? This is a really bad idea because I am definitely going to die. This rope is definitely going to break. I am for sure going to die. I even remember standing on the thing, saying a prayer of, dear Lord Jesus, please don't let this hurt that much because I was that convinced this rope was going to break. Now, if you had asked me at any point, I would have told you, I totally trust the rope. Obviously, I have total faith that this is going to be okay and that the rope will catch me. But it wasn't until I actually jumped and put my faith and trust in that rope that I actually had faith and trust in it. Faith and trust require an act. And that is exactly what Abraham is doing here. He's showing the Lord that I trust you so completely that I will put everything on the line because I trust you and I trust your word. And, you know, the story continues and he, he goes along with this. 
he takes Isaac up to the top, he bounds him, he, he's getting ready to kill him, which just like massive sidebar here. Can we talk about Isaac for a second? Because we always talk about Abraham's faith in this story, but Isaac was complicit in it. We read it and we think Isaac's a little boy, but that's not biblically accurate. Isaac was at youngest a teenager. Most scholars place him between the ages of 20 to 25. So he's a young man. And remember, Abraham's an old man, like like over a hundred. He's old. Isaac could definitely have overtaken Abraham if he wanted to, but he doesn't because he has such faith and trust in his father, the same way that Abraham has faith and trust in his heavenly father. It's it's actually incredible. Like Isaac's faith is really strong too. So it's a little important sidebar there for you. But Abraham, and he goes along with it. And right as he's about to literally kill Isaac. He, Isaac's on the altar. He's got the knife in hand. And then in verse 12, an angel of the Lord shows up in that very moment and says this, Abraham, Abraham, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. That's the test. The test isn't oh, what crazy thing can I get Abraham to do? Or, or oh, what, what can I get Abraham to sacrifice? No, the test is, Abraham, do you trust me with the most valuable thing you have? Do you really believe that I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do? Will you withhold anything in your life from me? That's the test. Now, this is the moment in a Genesis 22 sermon where normally a well-meaning pastor such as myself will say to you, so what do you need to sacrifice? What do you need to put on the altar and kill today? And yeah, maybe there is something. I would argue that if there's anything in your life you aren't willing to give back to God, that's probably an idol and you need to deal with that with him. But I think to simplify the whole story as, oh, we have to give these sacrifices to God and and what do you need to put on the altar and kill? That's actually quite a shallow understanding and interpretation of the story. Because there's a lot of evidence in Genesis 22 that suggests Abraham didn't think Isaac was going to die. Or at the very least that he wasn't going to stay dead. I mean, think about this. You have Abraham telling the servants, oh, Isaac and me will return to you. You have him somehow convincing Isaac to go along with all of this. He specifically says to Isaac, oh, the Lord will provide the lamb for the sacrifice. And we know from Hebrews that Abraham fully believed that God would raise Isaac from the dead if need be. So it it doesn't really seem like Abraham expected Isaac to stay dead. I'm going to suggest that Abraham fully expected to go up to the mountaintop and kill and sacrifice his son, but that he also fully expected to go up to that mountaintop and have God come through for him in some way, whether that's resurrection or provision or or whatever, that God was going to do something on that mountaintop so that he and Isaac would walk back down it together. Abraham is fully convinced, even as he has the knife in his hand standing over his son, he is fully convinced that God will make a way. That if God says Isaac is is the way the promise is going to happen, that something is going to happen to make that so, because God doesn't lie. It's this moment where Abraham is saying, I don't get it. I don't know the how but I know the who. I know who my God is. My God is faithful. My God never leaves me or forsakes me. My God makes a way where there is no way. He is trustworthy and kind, and what he speaks, he does. So if he tells me that my promise is going to come through Isaac, 
it's going to come through Isaac. And even if he tells me to kill Isaac and kill that thing, not even that, not even death will stop him from making his promise come to pass. That actually whatever he speaks, he does. And so I can be obedient and I can have faith because I might not know the how, but I dang straight know the who. And the who is a good God who is faithful and trustworthy. And so when we do that, when we, like Abraham, act in in that knowledge and truth of who the Lord is, when we put his character above our circumstances, he shows up. And that's what we find in the rest of this story in verses 13 to 14. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place the Lord will provide or Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Remember when Abraham said to Isaac, God will provide the the lamb? It's exactly what happens. God does provide. He's Jehovah Jireh. That name literally means the God who sees to it. And that's who he is. He's the God who sees to it. He's the God who shows up. And not only does he show up here to stop the sacrifice, he shows up as the sacrifice for Abraham and years later for all of us on the cross. That Jesus comes as the Lamb of God and the ultimate sacrifice. And it's amazing because centuries later, as the Lord Jesus walks up the hill to Calvary, it is literally this exact same hill, this exact same mountaintop that Abraham now stands on, that Jesus walks up carrying his cross. And you notice the ram is seen in a thicket, and and that can also be translated as like a thicket of thorns and brambles. And of course, King Jesus wears a crown of thorns for all of us as he dies for us on the cross. God does not spare his only son, Jesus, so that Abraham can spare his only son, Isaac, showing us that no matter what the promise is, whether it's Abraham's promise of Isaac and his offspring and and blessing through Isaac, or whatever the promise you have from the Lord, that it cannot be separated from the promise maker, Jesus. That they, they go hand in hand, that your promise can't be separated from the faithfulness and the trustworthiness of the one who gave it. And that is the good news. That, friends, is the good news. That is what Genesis 22 is teaching us, what the father of faith, Abraham, shows us in this story. And that's who God is. That's who God shows up in this story as, the God who is faithful, the God who sees to it, the God that you can trust with everything. And so today, what aren't you trusting him with? What piece of your life or heart have you not given to him? Is there a dream or a promise or something that you're withholding from him? Because he asks for all of it and he shows himself trustworthy with all of it. So I'm gonna pray for us now, but I wanna encourage you that he is as faithful as he says he is. And he always shows up because he is the God who sees to it. King Jesus, thank you that you are the God who provides, the God who shows up, the God who sees to it. And I pray for all of us today that we will have new levels of trust, that we'll have new levels of courage to go to those hard, scary places with you, that we recognize that It's not you being cruel, asking for us to sacrifice something, but it's actually you showing us your trustworthiness with the thing. So may we freely give to you, Lord. Yeah, stir in our hearts. Even now, Lord, even as I'm praying and speaking these words, stir all of our hearts and show us the pieces of our hearts and our lives that we have yet to give you, that we have yet to trust your faithfulness in. 
Thank you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Wow, Cosine family, what an amazing morning we've had. Thank you so much to Johnny and the band for leading us in that awesome worship session. And Sarah, thank you so much for that incredible word that you've brought to us. We've been so encouraged, haven't we, from listening to that word. It's been amazing. Yeah, we've had a great morning and we hope that you have too and that you feel more connected with Jesus. The best way that you can connect with us as family, as community, is now over on Zoom as we head into our Zoom groups, either with your life group or your virtual life group at this time. You should have received a Zoom link, but if you haven't and you wanna join us for a time of encouragement and discussion and prayer, then head over to our Facebook page where you'll find a link to join in with a Zoom group to join in all of that fun this morning. So all that's left for us to say is that we hope you have a great week. We hope you enjoy more of the wonderful weather that we've been having. And from all of us at Coastline, loads of love and God bless you. See you soon. Thank you.